Hi, Dave Lawrence here from the California Type Foundry. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit more about how to get the asterisk from the file that I'm going to give you into your own font. There's a couple of things you have to do because since all these things are linked and what it means when an element is linked, it just means that when I click on this here, then that's going to move everybody else around. Or if I click on this one here, then that moves everything over here around. So in order to keep those links, there's certain things that you have to do. If I go over to this, so say, okay, I made one here. So notice, I want you to look at the elements panel and notice that for this asterisk, the elements panel, this has this symbol up here saying, and I can push the arrow and that hides everything. And then here's every arm or prong of the asterisk. So this is inside a group. So inside a group, you need to have things inside a group so that way they know, oh, these are all related and it keeps the references. Because I want to show you something. If I just go to this one and, and the way that we can know that each of these are related is this number right here. See this five? That tells us that all those are elements references and that there's five of those things, which makes sense because it's a five prong thing. But then I, for the bullet, I also made an asterisk uh, because that seems like a natural place. But each of those has five also, but it's a different shape because these are not linked together only to each other. Okay, so now what happens is if I go into here, I click this, and then I move this around, each thing is going to move. Okay, so, so each of those is gonna move, but if I just go, if I just go V and I, and I copy everything and I'm doing Command C, so say if I want to copy everything over to somewhere else. So let me go back here again. Command A, Command C. Now I'm just going to go into a new one. Let's just put it for, for the, where the, the maybe the degree symbol is. Okay, so I'm just going to go into there. I'm going to paste it, Command V. And look, there's no nothing is linked here. There's no fives or anything. And if I go into here, then nothing is moving around. Okay, so I'm going to delete that one delete it okay so now what we're going to try is something different instead i'm going to, to highlight everything with v command c and we're going to try putting it into here and let's do an edit paste as elements okay and even when i do paste as elements which is shift command v on mac or shift control v in windows that is not going to do it if stuff is not together so how so those are some ways that you cannot copy the elements over and have it retain that. So if when you're copying out of my asterisk font to into your own design, so let me make a new file. Let's just push command N. So this is going to be an unnamed font. If we want to do that, one way you can do it is you you can take the entire asterisk. So if you have this one that doesn't have group, you, you can take the entire asterisk, you can command C. And then let's go to the asterisk over here, Command V, and the relationships are preserved. Now, one of the problems we have, if I go to font info over here, we see that the, this is called the regular style and the regular layer. So now we have a problem because in the asterisk one, that was called body. So you cannot, it, it will be very frustrating as you design see, because if I double click on the Y and then it makes, oh, it makes a, a layer called regular and you see this, open up your layers and masters panel and you'll see that, okay? So when you're moving it to a different font or if you're moving it to a different layer, so if you have a font that has multiple masters and a couple different things, maybe has a bold and a light and all that stuff, if you copy the asterisk from one layer to another, you have to make sure to rename that to whatever it's supposed to be. And the way we can tell that this is wrong is that it's not the name in the layers and masters panel. That's not in bold. And when it's just in regular, that means that that's not a master. This is just something else. Because you, there's many things you can do with layers. You can you can use it to just have a drawing as a reference or as a source. It doesn't necessarily have to be part of your actual font that's going to be exported. So what do we do? We double click this here and we name it regular and then it should turn bold 
And, and then we say uh, all glyphs. Usually I say all glyphs because if we don't really want that, or you could say the glyph depending on what, but yeah, all glyphs. Now it's regular. Now it's part of our master. So that's what you want to do. So if you're taking from my file, my Cal asterisk file, you want to copy that over and change it into, if you're put, copying it into the bold, change it into a bold or whatever it happens to be. Now, if your font has multiple layers, say it has a light, a bold, a regular, or a narrow, and, and all that stuff, then, then you might want to copy it a different way instead. Because what I did is I copied it as a glyph level, which means that it's going to paste over every layer from your layers and masters panel. So that means if I took this, um, let me let me actually just go to my ocean wide. I don't want to mess that one up. But say if I went this and I copied, and say I wanted to put it into this font of mine, uh, geometric, where is the asterisk? <laughs> okay, let me type it in. Okay, so one thing that you can do is you can type in asterisk, and then it will find it for you. Okay, here we go. Um, so this is based on my workflow where I sort of put the less important symbols at the end. So that's why we have these symbols less common, I just say, maybe not less important. Okay, so that's him there. So if I paste from this file, co copy it again, I can't remember if I did it. And then I just push paste over here. Um, then see, it's going to replace the whole thing. Replace contents with new contents, but keep existing glyphs under new name. So it may want to keep it under a new name. So now it's called asterisk one. But now this is just called body when my layers are extra light, extra light oblique, semi-bold, etc. So that's not going to be very useful for us uh, there. So then this has to be renamed. So what do we do instead? So let me uh, let me undo that and let me go instead inside here and let me copy this and this has to be grouped so how you grouped is the basic way the basic shortcuts that that you use for a group and let me see if i uh so command shift shift command g is going to be ungroup then to regroup them command a and then sh uh, command g is is the grouping and let me type in here so i can find where that is in the menus. Okay, so element, group, and then ungroup. So you wanna make sure all these things are grouped in the asterisk file I'm giving you, this all gonna be grouped there. So you copy you copy the entire group. Make sure you don't accidentally just click on part of it. See, if I just click on that, I don't have the entire group. I only have that one part. So I press Command A or highlight it all like that and copy it over. Now we are going to go into your file. So open up your file. And then we're going to double click in there. And instead of just pushing uh, Command V to paste it, well, let's see what that happens. Yeah, well, it did. It did preserve it. So, um, th so actually, that would work. That would work to preserve it. So now we have it pasted into this layer. And so we have, obviously, we have problems here because now it's uh, there's too much stuff here. So if I want to, I can delete him out. So let's delete that, move that over. Okay, so now he is in your new file. Obviously we have problems because there's a different style of, it's not gonna interpolate correctly, but that's how you get it into your file. Uh, make it into a group, copy it over, and then paste it. So while we're here in, in my file, I'm gonna give you an idea about what things, let me uncolor everything. I'm gonna show you sort of what things I use with elements. So I'm going to uncolor the flag. So I like to do for the geometric, I actually made some of these things with elements. I used D and uh, the, the B I had to modify and take the elements off after a while. The H and the N and the M, those are using elements. Okay, there's some issue with that guy. <clears throat> So, okay, number signs. This is a great one. Look at the number signs. So watch what you can do here. So if I have this here, I can adjust this, see? And then this side, I can then adjust how I want to. And then I can move these guys in relationship to each other. And it's going to be pretty much, they're going to keep the similar relationship. So I've found that the number sign, using these sort of L-looking 
T looking shapes for the number sign. That's been pretty useful for me. Percentage is great since you have the zeros copied over. That's great for using elements. Um, let me think here. Then some of these are auto layers. As you see, everything with the blue block, those are auto layers. That's what I like to use for those. I'm using components for some of these things that are based on auto layers. So I don't use it for that. So your the elements are things that repeat like this. This is using an element where I've took the dagger and I just flipped it around and put it like that. Uh, some simple things such as that over there. Multiply is another one. This one's not using the elements right now. Either is a plus, but those are two things that can use the elements because you can put use the minus sign and then just copy that over for all of these things and use that as as the element for those to save time. Okay, but the asterisk is the big one because that can get annoying. So now you know a little bit about how to do it. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.